Superbase markets itself as an open source Firebase alternative. But what's even more interesting than what it is, is how it does it. Having worked with Superbase now, I can tell you that Superbase is essentially a wrapper for PostgreSQL. So it was really like Postgres with superpowers. Now Postgres by itself is already a highly respected open source database with 26 years of battle tested experience. When you add Superbase into the mix as well, you're getting access to some additional killer features like in-browser DBA tools with live data updates, a ready for browser JavaScript client that supports your Superbase's RESTful, GraphQL, and real-time APIs. A CLI for launching a local Docker instance for local development and migration of local changes to a production instance. And last but not least, DB hosting and very competitive pricing. All this is added on top of an exposed Postgres instance. Exposed meaning Superbase gives us the keys to the actual Postgres instance it's wrapping, meaning we can use tools like pgdump, psql, sql scripts, and any of the other old school tools that make Postgres awesome. And they all just work. It also means that it's very easy to move away from Superbase if they decide to up their prices. In the rest of this video, we're going to look at how we can integrate with NX to build even more tooling on top of the already excellent tooling we get out of the box with Superbase. Starting with creating a workspace lib for your Superbase instance. So we're starting here with an empty NX workspace and I'll use the NX console plugin to create a new workspace lib and we're going to give it the name uh, Pokemon DB because the example I'm going to do is a Pokemon database. So we'll hit run here. It's going to go create our library. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, drop a git commit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to CD into that lib. And now uh, I already have the Superbase CLI installed. If you don't have it installed, you can check out the GitHub here for installation instructions. But I'm just going to call Superbase init. And we can see that finished the init. What we can see that changed is it added the Superbase directory inside of the Pokemon DB lib. And it added this config.toml file. So I'm not going to do it here yet but we could enter now the command superbase start. Now we'll go ahead and start up our superbase instance locally with Docker. Uh, I don't wanna do that yet. Uh, instead, I'm gonna create a target for this command. And there's a simple reason why. Right now I am two levels deep into my uh, Pokemon DB library. Normally we wouldn't want to be jumping around inside of our repository to just to run a certain command. So instead what I'm going to do is go into the project.json. So this is the project JSON for the Pokemon DB uh, library we just made. I'm going to add here uh, inside of our targets uh, a new start target. Uh, we're going to use the run commands executor from Narwhal workspace. And we're going to give it an options where the command here is super base start. And very importantly, we're going to give it the command working directory of lib slash Pokemon DB. So what this is going to let us do is now doesn't matter uh, where we run this from uh, root or some other directory. If we happen to be in another, uh, this will always use the lib slash Pokemon DB as the working directory. And we'll be able to run super base start the way we want to. Uh, while we're here, I'm just going to drop in another real quick for stop. Same thing. Uh, this is just stopping the super base instance instead of starting it now. So um, with the tooling, I'm just going to click here to show they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it oops so I forgot to save there but let's go ahead and click it now boom now we can see we're running a pokemon db start uh, so we can see uh, when Superbase started up, uh, it did a couple things. We can see it kind of here, but uh, it applied Superbase extensions.sql. Uh, you'll notice we don't have one yet, but if we wanted to, we could add migration SQL scripts here to uh, define what our Superbase schema looks like. We also have the seed a SQL a script that we could and we could supply here to our super base and that would give us an initial seed to uh, put data into our database. You can also see uh, the API is running the database. So this is our uh, exposed Postgres instance. Uh, we can see it running here. Uh, we also can go into the studio, uh, for example, that opened up this browser over here uh, that has all of the cool stuff that you see in the live version out there complete with the table 
editor and everything. Uh, nothing in there yet. We now have our uh, executor to run this. Uh, another cool thing about this is now, uh, if we go to our projects here, we have this nice start and stop button uh, to start up or stop our uh, Pokemon database. So I'm going to run the stop command now, and that should stop it. So before we move on, I did want to point out that we could have initialized our Supabase instance at the root of our repository. And there are two reasons we didn't. The first reason is that it's very possible that you may have wanted multiple Supabase instances or domains for your one NX repository. This is actually the case with one of my side projects that's following a microservices architecture. Initializing Supabase into a lib makes it feasible for us to scale up to n number of Supabase instances in our repo. If you do do this, make sure you also adjust the config .toml files as well as you'll need unique ports for each one of your instances. The second reason is I think it's just better to have all your SQL scripts sequestered inside of a lib rather than running around at the root of your repository. Even if we just had the one Supabase instance, it just seems like that's better organization. But that may be just a matter of preference. All right, so with the magic of editing, I committed all of our changes. I added a schema.sql to add a Pokemon moves and learnable moves table to the database. And then I started up Supabase again and used the browser editor to get some data into my database. Now I just want to save those changes. So enter good old PG dump. All right, so to create our snapshot, I'm going to start by adding a script to our lib slash Pokemon DB slash source file. So I'll do new file. And I'm going to take the script and copy it over and we can go through it real quick. Uh, so what the script is going to do is uh, we're going to create our asynchronous snapshot of local. So this console log it out and use inquirer, uh, a package that I installed during the break. Um, that's going to prompt us to enter a name for a snapshot. So we can give it a name we want. If we don't provide a name, we'll just use the timestamp uh, from whenever it was run. And here's where the magic happens. Um, we're going to use the PG dump tool. Uh, so you want to make sure you have this installed in case you don't. We're going to use the environment variable to give it uh, to give PG dump our password. And we're going to give it the host and the port and the user, all of these things should be the same for you for local. And we wanted to go into the file that is based on the name that was provided. And then I'm just going to specify specific tables here. So specifically the Pokemon table, the moves table, and the learnable moves table. So I'll hit save there. We'll jump into the project JSON file here. And below stop, I'm going to add uh, another uh, target here. We'll call it create snapshot of local. I'm just going to copy that over here and paste it in. You can note we're using the run commands executor again. Uh, this time our command is like so. Uh, we're essentially just using ts node to run that script we just made and uh, giving it the ts config.json file we want to use. All right, so everything looks good. So now if I click it, we'll give it the name test. Boom, uh, that successfully ran, and we can see inside of our snapshots directory here, uh, we have all the data we put in. Next up, I'm going to create a similar one. Um, so over here, I'm going to copy all of this script and dump it over here. Um, so this one, we're going to do the same thing, only instead of taking a snapshot of our local, we're going to use our prod. Uh, database. So this is the one that you actually have out on Supabase. So for this, we're just going to make a few changes to our PG dump. Here, I'm going to use the dollar sign to fill in Pokemon DB underscore Postgres password. And we'll fill in this environment variable later. Um, there we go. And then for the host, we're also going to use an environment variable here. So we're going to call this dollar sign Pokemon oops, DB Postgres host. Adjust the port there to match what it's going to be for our actual Postgres. Also just going to stick prod into the name so that we know this is a prod one. 
and everything else should be the same. I think that's good. So I'm going to hit save there. Also, I'm going to create at the root of our project a new file here, call it .env. So um, the two environment variables I use, I'm going to stick them in here. Boom, boom. Uh, I'm not actually going to fill them out, though, because I just wanted to demonstrate how this would work, because uh, I can't show you my real password or my real host. But uh, if you want to go on your super base, uh, when you created it, you should have created a password for your Postgres. Uh, you can enter that in here to your .env file at the root of your project. Uh, you should also put your host here, which you can also find on your, the super base website. And the idea here is we would git ignore this file, and that way uh, it's not committed to a source code because these are secrets we don't necessarily want to get out, uh, particularly the password. Um, so, but by doing this, we can kind of obfuscate the password from any of our scripts like this one and just kind of use it like that. So that's something that Annex gives you out of the box is the .env support for all of our scripts and targets and whatnot. Um, so yeah, uh, now that that's in place, we're just going to go to the project JSON. I'm going to grab that here and put over here. We're just going to rename this one real quick, create product snapshot and create a touch this up real quick of prod save it and now uh, we can't run it because the .env file is not set up yet but now we can see we've also got our two additional targets here for creating a local and creating a prod snapshot so it's really easy for us to just do that again if we ever want to at home stretch, we're going to do one last script here to restore a snapshot now that we've made them all. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create this really quick clear db.sql script. Uh, what this is going to do, this is not going to delete the entire database, but it's going to delete all the data from all the tables we care about. So uh, just have that really quick because we'll need it for our next step, which is creating a new file in our source. We will call it restore. Let's just call it restore snapshot TS. Uh, I'm going to grab this code over here and dump it in. We can take a look real quick. Uh, so this one is for storing it to local DB. You can kind of connect the dots to figure out how to do it to the prod one yourself. Uh, but uh, essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to use inquirer again and we're going to use like uh, the Dir, read dir sync to just parse in all the files that we have inside of our snapshots directory. So right now it should just be the one. But then we'll use inquirer to do a list prompt. Uh, so we're going to say select a snapshot to restore and then provide a list with all the snapshots that we gathered from, uh, from our directory here. And then uh, first thing we're going to do once we have that is run our script to clear out all the tables. So essentially make all the tables empty. And then we're going to take the snapshot that we recorded here. So again, take a look. It's just inserting these rows into the tables. And we're going to uh, run that uh, with psql, same as the other one. And we're just using the, very much the same kind of method that we use for uh, for PG dump with psql here, only this time passing it a file with the SQL script uh, so that it will run what it needs to run. So cool, I'm going to save that and we're going to go into our project JSON file so we can add a new target here. Okay, so now we'll add our new target in. I'm just going to paste that in. Notice we're again using run commands, uh, just using TS node to run our new script, passing it the tsconfig.json. Let's go ahead and run it. You'll see here's the list of all the things to restore. Click enter on that. It's going to go through and close things out. Uh, so just to demonstrate this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run stop real quick. So our uh, database is stopped. I'm going to start it up. So this is going to run the uh, migrations to get the schema in there but uh, we should see empty tables. Perfect. So we're going to jump into the studio here and go into our tables. You can see uh, our tables are there, but they're all empty. So now we're just going to run our restore snapshot here. Let's 
going to ask which one to restore. We'll do the one we have. Now if we refresh our studio over here, we can see our moves are back in place. And all of our stuff is back in place. Perfect. So that's some basics with how you can get started with Supabase with NX. We hope this was helpful and you figure out some other cool ways to incorporate this into your own projects. In the future, we'll do another video for Supabase, particularly how to wrap their client into something that's easily usable and easy to get rid of Supabase if we want. So if it's ready, the link's going to be right here. So, you know, click it. Bye. <laughs>